Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. Super excited today that we have um, a guest speaker, Meg McMillan, and she's going to talk to us about branding photography. Um, so thanks, Karen. Um, my hope is that after today, you guys feel more empowered to do a personal brand photo shoot. So let me go ahead and screen share. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining everyone. I just wanted to um, introduce myself and really the topic of today, like I said, is I want you to feel more empowered at the end to even just try a personal brand session if you haven't. Um, and so I'm going to go over a lot of my secrets to personal branding and just what I've learned from being in this industry for um, going on three years, doing over 200 personal brand photo shoots. I'm going to share all my good stuff with you. So first off, I am Meg Marie, Meg Marie McMillan. And part of my story is that I had 27 jobs in my life. My first business failed. I dropped out of college. And honestly, I was at a point of frustration and low confidence where I thought I would never find my purpose in life. Like I was really struggling in the career area. And so I moved abroad to Taiwan to teach English and kind of ignore, ignore <laughs> um, the career aspect, but I love travel and this was a way to travel. And I thought, hey, I should buy a camera to document my travels like, and start a blog, a travel blog, why not? So I bought my first Nikon camera in Taiwan and I just started learning photography. You know, I dove in heart first and it turns out the universe had bigger plans for me with that camera. I thought this would just be a fun hobby. I've always loved taking pictures. And then I started watching, you know, things like Cole's Classroom. You know, I started watching YouTube videos and learning from photographers about how to use a DSLR. And I realized, wow, you can actually make a living doing photography, like doing this incredible, fun art. And I just never thought that, I just never thought it was possible to like do, do what I loved and make a good living doing it. And I started learning from all these wedding photographers online, of course, who are educators and realizing this is possible. You can make a really th good thriving business and a great living from photography. And so when I came back from traveling abroad, I was all in. I was like, you know what? I don't know what else I'm doing with my life. And so I'm just going to go all in on this. I'm going to have no plan B. I am going to pursue photography. I still had to get a day job in the meantime to pay the bills. But while I was building my business, I just decided to commit and um, I just went all in. And my original intention was to be a wedding photographer. I'm going to come back to that. But I wanted to just pause and let you into my life a little bit more so I'm currently pregnant. I'm having my first first baby, baby boy, in about a month. I'm about four weeks out from the due date. That's me and my husband. And um, I've just always really wanted a job that gave me flexibility, gave me freedom to spend time with my family. You know, growing up, my mom was always working really, really hard, two jobs, and we didn't get to spend a lot of time together. And I wanted, you know, a different story for me and my family. And I also love travel. <laughs> Brand photography has allowed me to do that. It's allowed me so much freedom in my life to create my own schedule, you know, um, to be with family. Even last month, actually, my dad passed away, and, but I was able to go and spend three weeks in September with him, with family, just drop everything. I didn't have to ask anyone for permission, right? <laughs> or like time off. I could just be there with family. And I've created this abundant life of freedom and just travel and adventure. That picture up here is me in Morocco last year. <laughs> Shout out if you've been to Morocco, but I got paid to go with a client to Morocco, <laughs> one of my personal brand clients and good friends, and take pictures of her in Morocco and Spain. We rode camels through the Sahara Desert. We had we ate amazing meals and just traveled and had such a good time. Last year in 20, sorry, this was 2019 <laughs> before coronavirus. Um, but uh, last year, I or actually no, this year, January 2020, I also got to go to Costa Rica for a yoga client who paid me to go to her retreat and. Um, 
uh, I got to do yoga. I got to do yoga with her. I got to capture this beautiful, beautiful retreat, transformational retreat for women in Costa Rica, this beautiful resort, and then travel another week after that. And all this I've created intentionally because that's what I wanted. And I just want to give you um, some inspiration, some background on my story, because my biggest mission in my photography business, in my life, in talking to photographers like you, is that I want you to do the work that you are born to do. That's really my mission. And um, yeah, we're going to talk about that today. <laughs> That's my why. You know, I wanted to start with that. It's really important we have that um, mission and that purpose behind our business and, and why we're doing what we're doing, right? The other part of my why is really my clients. You know, once I started getting into this personal brand work, I realized it's so much more than photography, right? These business owners need content, but what they really want is that confidence. They want the confidence to follow their dreams, to build their dream business, to follow, you know, their passions and to believe in themselves and really feel proud of the images they're putting out online and who they are. And, and we get to do that. It's so rewarding. Brand photography, I had no idea it would be so rewarding. And um, I feel like I'm talking fast, <laughs> but I just want to say like how I got into brand photography. Let's go to the next slide. <laughs> how I got into brand photography um, is I was doing everything at first, right? I thought I was going to be a wedding photographer. I was really pursuing that. And I was doing newborns, families, weddings. I even did funerals. And then one day, my best friend asked me, hey, Meg, will you do like a photo shoot for my marketing business? And I'm like, sure. She's like, we can go to these couple places. I have some outfits in mind. And I said, that sounds fun. Why not? And I did that, right? That one photo shoot for her, that one photo shoot helped her business just take off. Like she started sharing the photos and she was all already a really talented, you know, marketer and doing pretty well. But when she shared these new images of herself in a whole new way, people were like, whoa, girl, whoa, Steph, you're like, they just started being attracted to her energy. She started booking more clients left and right. I started getting so many referrals from that one photo shoot because people were saying, who did your photo stuff? I need photos like that. And that's how it started, you guys, from that one shoot. And it just continued to grow until I was able to step away from weddings. Um, and I want to talk about, you know, briefly, what is personal branding? So I know we have like some commercial photographers on watching. And personal branding is a whole separate category to me than commercial photography. Personal branding, you know, you're working with high level entrepreneurs and business owners a lot of the times, or maybe new business owners who are just starting and they need you to help elevate their brand. Um, but these business owners, you know, the biggest thing with them, I want you to know is time. They are hiring you because they want to save time and they want to make more money. And so it's a little different, you know, working with personal branding compared to family portrait shoots, newborns, weddings, any portrait photography, because instead of, you know, business to consumer, it's B2B. It's business to business. It's a different, it's a whole different zone. You know, you're selling to a business owner. It's much different. And that business owner usually has a marketing budget they want to invest uh, their money in. And so they're willing to pay you know, good money for great photos that are going to help them grow their business and save time and make more money, right? Um, and so it's growing really rapidly. I don't know if you guys have noticed. Maybe that's why you're here because you're like hearing all this buzz about brand photography and you're seeing on Instagram all the brand photographers popping up right now. And it's because it's it's the best time. It really is the best time to get into brand photography um, because there's so many people starting their business right now, especially with COVID. It's even grown. I've seen a huge um, increase in my business just over the last six months because people finally have time to slow down, to start that dream business, to work on their branding. And so it's a great time. I just want to encourage you. I'm not trying to convince you to switch to brand photography here, but I want you to know there's another option because when I first started, I thought wedding photography was the only way to, you know, really make it as a photographer and, and, 
and I liked wedding photography, but brand photography was more, um, it just comes more natural to me. It's more my zone of genius. And one of the reasons is because I really like um, working one-on-one -on -one with clients. So last thing I want to talk about on this slide, <laughs> not really following my slides exactly, but okay. Um, actually, no, I'm doing pretty good. Okay, so repeat and subscription cl subscription clients is the other reason. Um, is another big thing with brand photography that makes it different than other types of photography. You know, I have gotten 15 plus, over 15 people on my yearly subscription offer, and they pay me every month for 10 to 12 months, just a monthly payment subscription, and we do a couple shoots a year. So there's so much you can do with brand photography because your clients, um, they always need content. And as their business grows, especially with your amazing photos, they're gonna just want more content. They're gonna need more content. So you get a lot of repeat business if you're doing really great with your client experience. And I just wanna talk about, you know, like I said, not trying to convince you to go to brand photography, but I just want you to know that um, there's, there's this whole other world of brand photography. And why I love it is because you don't work weekends unless you want to, but I typically do all my photo shoots on the weekdays and I encourage my clients to do that because a lot of times public places, beaches, parks, uh, coffee shops, places we're gonna do the photos, they're way more busy on the weekends. So we definitely like to do weekdays. That's a win because I know I wanna spend time with my, my family on the weekdays because my husband, is, he has a corporate job. Um, and then I love working one-on-one -on -one with a client. You know, I loved all my wedding clients. It was amazing, but it's very, it's very different experience. It's very hectic when you're, you know, on a wedding day and trying to wrangle 50 people for family photos and even posing couples is very different than just working one-on-one. -on -one. Let me know in the comments too, if you guys, I don't know what's going on in the comments, but <laughs> do you love working and posing one-on-one -on -one with clients? If so, this might be a great option for you. Um, also, you know, I love creative styling, directing, planning the, the photo shoot. You have a lot more creative control with brand photography compared to um, other types of photography where you're not picking locations, you're not picking time of day, you're not sitting down and planning all the shots with your client ahead of time. So it's a lot more fun if you like to do that stuff. Um, and then it, it is less competitive right now, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Um, it's in high demand. There's a lot of business owners online needing content. Instagram has really exploded the personal brand industry because everyone needs photos <laughs> for Instagram. So I love that about it. Um, and then building confidence in my clients has been, again, like I said, just so rewarding. The relationships I've gotten to build these women and men I've gotten to serve and seeing their business just blossom, seeing them, you know, look at themselves in a whole new way. That's been, that's been really the best part um, for me. So let's get into it. We're going to just cover three brief topics today, just three little secrets and a few secrets on, of, on each topic. <laughs> but I was trying to think like, what are the three things that really will help you stand out as a brand photographer? And number one is client experience. So we're gonna talk about what goes into planning and prepping for a successful brand photo shoot. And then the next thing is that final product, that final gallery of images. And what are brand clients specifically looking for that's different from any other type of portrait photography in that final gallery of photos? And then lastly, your mindset as a business owner. What are some key shifts that will really help you just stand out in this industry, just be successful. And this is really for all types of photography, a lot of these, but there are some really specifics um, that'll help you with, with brand photography. Remember to drop any questions in the, in the chat, the questions tab. <laughs> I feel like I'm going, I'm gonna be going kind of fast. And at the end, hang out with me, because at the end, I have a special bonus I made just for you guys, created just for this, webinar with three email templates 
that every brand photographer needs. So I've worked really hard creating these templates. They're the exact templates I use in my own client experience, and I'm gonna give them to you for free. So like I said, the goal is just learn, take notes, and feel more empowered to try a personal brand session. So again, and I think I mentioned this, but the difference, you know, personal branding versus a lot of commercial photography, you're working with bigger brands, you're working with products, you're, you're working with bigger companies sometimes. Personal branding, I really define as like that one-on-one -on -one client work, that solo entrepreneur. Um, and it's so important, the experience that you give them um, to keep it simple. That's the first tip I have for you guys, is keep it simple, yet I put intentional because it is a lot of planning and prep that goes into it but we don't want to overwhelm the client. These are busy business owners, okay? We don't want to give them too many options. And when I say keep it simple, it's everything from your offers. I've been really successful only offering one option uh, with pricing, like a full day shoot for a long time. And that's it. If you want to work with me, you do the full day. Here's what it is. That's the option. And it just keeps things simple and easy for them to say yes. You know, we don't wanna overwhelm our clients. We don't wanna confuse them. Um, same thing with like our client experience. So there is a lot of planning we're gonna talk about today that goes into it. And so the biggest thing is how can we be, you know, thorough and really get to know and understand their brand and guide them in the planning process without it feeling overwhelming. <laughs> so that's the goal. Um, and with that, email templates are your best friend. That's why I'm sharing, you know, a couple of my favorites at the end of the training with you because it helps you make sure you're communicating all the information the client's going to need ahead of time before they even ask. Um, but you're not having to, you know, rewrite everything for every client. Plus, if I did that, I would forget. I would definitely forget to remind them something important. So email templates are key. You know you can make those in shoot proof. Makes your job really easy. I also use HoneyBook. Um, I use Google email templates. Whatever system that you have right now will work. <laughs> but you do want to simplify. You want to simplify, um, but you want to keep it professional, right? That's why I also love shoot proof. That shoot proof was my first investment as a photographer. And I ran my whole business through their contracts, agreements, um, pricing, and email templates. So the next one is um, brand questionnaire. So with brand photography, the biggest thing is um, it's a lot of planning ahead of time. So not every brand is the same. I showed you these three pictures that are on the screen right now because these three brands are very different what they're selling, who they're serving. You know, this first brand over here on the left, Kia, she actually runs a nonprofit for kids with cancer. Um, and she, she builds their dream rooms, right? So we actually did some photos of her in one of the rooms she created. But, you know, her brand is very soft, very loving, very calm. Whereas Camila over here in the middle, she is a marketer. And her brand is Heart Behind Hustle. And she is all about balancing like the, hearts and, the heart and the hustle of business and marketing. And then over here, Lauren, um, she is a copywriter for really bold entrepreneurs. And her brand is like bold, loud, fearless, unapologetic or some of her brand words. And so very different feelings for each brand, right? And how I'm able to, how we are able to start planning the session and picking things like wardrobe, locations, props, it all starts with a brand questionnaire. So you wanna create a basic brand questionnaire and some of the questions you're gonna want on there are like, how would you describe your brand in three to five words? What are the three to five words that sum up the mood of your brand? And this is a great question to ask because if a client says calm, peaceful, relaxing, that's gonna be a very different vibe than Lauren over here who says like bold, fearless, bright, right? Um, and so that alone will help you to start um, creating ideas. Another question on my brand questionnaire that I'll send to the client, 
that's super helpful is just like getting a, a pulse on, um, well, first of all, the first questions, let me back up, is just understanding their brand. So number one, understanding their brand, right? And asking things like, what do you do? What's your elevator pitch? Who are you here to serve? Who's your ideal client? You know, why did you get into this work? Why are you so passionate about what you do? And just really just understanding their business and who they are, especially as a personal brand, that's really important. Um, then asking about the brand words and then just asking about like, do you have locations in mind? What outfits make you feel magnetic on camera? Any props that you have in mind to bring that are on brand? And all these questions will help you when you sit down and you have a little planning session with them you can do this on Zoom, an hour call together, and you go over the brand questionnaire and you start to create the shot list for the brand photo shoot. So you, you'll get a good feel for you know, locations after really understanding and diving into the client's brand of what they want, right? I feel like there's gonna be a lot of questions on this, so just drop your questions in the comments. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so the shot list, um, oops, let me go back one more. You wanna create a shot list that's gonna guide you on the photo shoot day. Um, and, it, and again, it all is inspired by that brand questionnaire and asking things like, what are you gonna use the photos for? That's a great question to have on there. You know, website, Instagram, is going to be common answers. <laughs> but sometimes you can ask like are you is there any specific thing you have coming up like a launch or something you're promoting that you have a specific vision for and some business owners are going to say yes, I have this like special Black Friday holiday launch coming up and I need photos of this or I need a, a banner photo for my Facebook group or you know, so asking the questions, that's, this is the biggest thing with the brand client experience. I see a lot of new brand photographers get wrong is they don't take the time to sit down and understand the brand and they treat every branding session like it's the same as another brand session, but it's not right. Every brand is so unique and different um, from their colors to their mood. That's another great question to have on there is what are your brand colors? And we want to try those, try to tie the colors in of the brand to, you know, wardrobe, locations, props. So these are easy tips you can guide your client with is, you know, make sure to wear your brand colors on that day. Make sure you're planning most of the outfits um, in your brand color palette, right? And then the last, I just wanted to say a few things about client experience when it comes to confidence on camera. This is how I really stand out and shine. This is part of my brand um, promise is that I help my clients feel confident on camera and we can all do this, right? I know we didn't get into this work to be creative directors, but no client wants to be sitting there in front of the camera, like, like awkward silence and not knowing what to do. So it's really important that we start to um, direct our clients, make them feel comfortable and get used to, and uh, have have some poses, five to 10 poses in your back pocket, a little posing flow of what you can guide your client through in the moment to help them feel confident, less awkward. Uh, this could be a whole nother presentation on itself. But <laughs> I just wanna mention that, that it is our job to direct the client, to pose the client, and that's just gonna make for a better client experience because everyone feels awkward on camera, right? Everyone wants direction. Everyone just wants to laugh or giggle, um, play music for them, just whatever it takes to kind of loosen up and get those authentic expressions. And then the client experience never ends. The last thing is, you know, with brand, uh, the brand client experience specifically, I love to do things like featuring the client on Instagram, featuring their business after the shoot, or sending them a fun little, um, like a thank you card with a print in there is really powerful. If you print a couple of their images, some five by sevens from their shoot, and you write a handwritten thank you, because most of the time with brand photography, they're not printing their photos. They don't need prints. They're, they're just wanting the digitals. 
to post online, to grow their business for social media. So when you actually print a photo of themselves and you say, I want you to frame this, I want you to put it somewhere where you see it and celebrate yourself uh, and your beauty, they just, they love it. You know, little things like that we can do to keep the client experience going, which I'm sure a lot of you do already. But for brand clients, the featuring their business is everything. They love that tagging them on Instagram. So let's switch gears. Besides the experience, let's talk about the actual photos and the final gallery of images because this is why they're paying you. You know, this is this is why business owners are willing to invest great money in a brand photo shoot if they're going to get the images that they really need and will use for their brand, for their website, for social media. So the first thing I want to say, kind of going back to the experience, is collaboration is key. You know, when we're getting these final, I call it the final product, because I think we forget that we actually do have a product. Yes, we're service providers, and that is number one. And I hear a lot of, um, let me take a sip of water really quick, sorry. <laughs> Um, I hear a lot of photographers focusing on like client experience, client experience, which is great, 100%. But we have to remember, we have a final product, those that final gallery of images, even more with brand photography, that business owner, they're hiring you, this is business, this is to make money. So that final gallery really needs to be intentional and amazing. It needs to wow your clients. Um, it has to be images they feel excited to share, not boring blazer headshot photos. I'm sorry, but you know, those are going out of style. <laughs> you know, nowadays clients want expressive images. They want unique images. They want to stand out online. They want that image that's going to be like, wow, when you go to their website and make you really want to get to know them, right? That's what we do as personal brand creators. Um, and so, you know, the biggest thing I want you to remember <laughs> that's different with brand photography than other photography genres is it's not about your vision. It's about your client's vision. And that's why I said collaboration is key because we have to bring our client's brand vision to life, not our own vision. And so that's where that planning session, having a questionnaire, really getting to know the client, you know, showing them on that planning session, um, we look at Pinterest boards. We look at their, their favorite Instagram accounts. That's one of the questions on the questionnaire. You know, what are two or three brands who, whose visual aesthetic you really love? And we go through that and we talk about it and I really get to know the client and what they're looking for on that session. And that's really, really key to them loving that final product. Right. Um, and then expressive images, like I said, the, we only have, I think, what is it, three seconds nowadays? It used to be seven, and now the average attention span <laughs> is three seconds. So when people are like scrolling through Instagram, we have three seconds to capture their attention, and it's the photo of the post that really captures the attention first, right? Before the content, before the caption. And so we gotta get these like bold, beautiful, creative images for the client. Um, and show the different sides of the client. You know, this was one brand session with one client and um, we did one hour at one location, a house, and I think we did about four outfits there. And then we did another hour at the beach and did like three or four looks there. Um, and so I'm jumping ahead, but with that, <laughs> it's really important to get variety. So we were able to get like seven or eight outfits Variety is really, really key when it comes to brand photography. It's different than, you know, your engagement session or your family session where they're only going to wear a couple outfits. With brand photography, you know, they really only need three or four photos in each outfit. They're not going to post 15 photos in the same outfit. They're not. So how you can make your service and product really stand out and more valuable is by getting in the habit of not overshooting. <laughs> this one's really hard for me. Um, not overshooting and delivering a huge variety to the client. 
and variety in wardrobe, variety in expressions, variety, <clears throat> excuse me, in their, um, in the crops and composition. Let's talk about that next actually. So huge difference with brand photography is that the composition of the photos and the crops, you need to get some with negative space. So write this down. This is one of the biggest mistakes I see brand photographers make in the beginning is they're so used to getting those beautiful portraits from like weddings or families that you're gonna like print and put on the wall or put in a frame. But with brand photography, they're not printing the photos. It's not about creating a pretty uh, canvas work of art, right? It's about an image that's going to look good on in an Instagram square when they crop it square on Instagram, right? Or it's about an image that's gonna be good for the banner photo across the top of their website. This one down here, I intentionally left all this white space over to the side of the client and picked a really neutral background to blur out and I even overexposed a little bit. Um, that's part of my editing style, but intentionally so she can use this on her website. She can put text here to the right of the picture and I get that for every client. That's on my key shot list is, you know, website, banner, photos with negative space to the side. Every client, whether it's like a wall, if we're kind of out and about on a mural wall or like a, a simple uh, white wall somewhere, or it doesn't have to be white, maybe it's one of their brand colors, maybe you can find a pink wall, that's even better, um, or you're blurring the background, just some, you're going to need these a few images that have that negative space. So this is all part of communication, the planning process, asking your client, you know, do you have any specific vision for that like website photo or for your website images? Are there any specific photos you want? Um, and some people, some entrepreneurs who have been in the game for a while, they're gonna say, yes, I know exactly what I want, do, 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 do. And it makes your job really easy because <laughs> you're like, okay, taking notes, taking notes, writing the list, and then you have this whole list that the client really created because they knew exactly what they wanted for their brand. Um, again, it's about their vision. But you also get clients where that new business owner, they're gonna be like, I don't know what I need, tell me what I need. So it's your job as the brand photographer to say, let's get a couple images, let's make sure we get a variety of vertical crops that are better for Instagram, but also horizontal, which will be great for like email newsletters and your website. And we'll get some with negative space on the side in case you wanna you know, put some text there on the website. Um, we'll get headshots of you in every outfit, of course, and just you know, fun, expressive, playful images that fit those brand words, fit your brand mood, right? And kind of communicate the message of your brand. You know, this woman, I wonder if you can guess what she does, right, from the photos, that's the goal. <laughs> so she's a spiritual coach. She's a spiritual coach. A business coach but you know that's why we picked really just light and airy colors backgrounds just kind of um calm vibes but she also she does like this fun dancing helps her clients un unlock their their feminine energy and confidence and so i got some of her dancing i got some of her looking really confident and strong got some of her just kind of cozy reading her her books so anyways um, the final product, the final gallery of images, you really want to feel like your client. You want them to look at it and say, just be blown away, right? Um, and I talked about variety and not overshooting, which is really hard for me. <laughs> just for those of you who also like are overshooters and you just, you're just like, you're in love with the lighting, you're in love with this background, you're in love with that outfit, and you could just keep taking photos, let's try this, let's try that. No, you have to stop yourself with brand photography. <laughs> um, and you have to say, oh, you know what, we got some good images in this outfit, okay, go ahead and change. And then, you know, they can change and get a more, a bigger variety of outfits. And that is um, really, really key with brand photography. I know I talked about that a lot, but it is a really important one um, to, to position yourself as uh, a, an amazing brand photographer because <laughs> that's what the client wants. They want to see a huge variety in their final gallery. So my average client, just so you know, does about 12 different outfits, about a dozen different outfits 
for the full day shoot with me, which is about six hours. Um, yeah, so it's just about like two to three looks per hour, or like I like to say about three to four looks per location is really realistic to get. And that should be a good, a good goal for you as the photographer, three to four looks per hour of shooting for your clients so they can get that variety on their brand session. And the last thing I wanna mention about the final product when it comes to brand photography, like I said, we wanna make our clients happy because if they get the gallery of photos back, no matter how much we love it as the photographer, the creator, if they don't love the images of themselves and they're not gonna share them, what's the point? They're just gonna sit on a computer, they're not gonna share on social media, they're not gonna tag you in your brand, they're not gonna grow their business, they're probably not gonna come back to you and book again. So. I really love empowering my clients to pick their favorite photos. So what I do, and you'll see this in the email template, you'll get this template of how I communicate this with the client, but I send them a proof gallery of about, you know, it's usually around 500 photos from the six hour day. It, um, but if you're doing a shorter shoot, maybe it's half that, right? Um, and then they go through, and this is why I love shoot proof. I could not live without shoot proof. They go through and they star their favorite photos in shoot proof. I love the filtering system that shoot proof has. My clients love it. I, I don't get clients that get confused. Like they get it. It's really easy to use and they are able to pick their favorite photos. Um, and I include a hundred in their collection for a full day right now. Um, my current offer and then I edit those photos. That way they're getting photos that they actually love of themselves. They're gonna use, they're gonna post, and I'm not wasting my time editing two, 300 photos that they're never, some of those they don't even like, right? So that's a really, really key, and I think it really um, elevates your client experience when you let the client know, hey, I know not all photographers do this, but I actually let you pick your favorite photos because I want you to love the photos I know we all have our little things about our body or our face or different angles we like. So I'm going to take a ton of photos and you get to pick your top photos. Last thing, made it to mindset. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up pretty quickly. I knew I would talk longer than I planned. <laughs> so the last thing I just wanted to mention today, you guys, is um, you could have the most amazing client experience, beautiful images that are powerful and and intentional, but if you don't have a good mindset and you don't have confidence in yourself as a photographer, it's gonna be really hard to build a successful business, right? So the first thing is just make sure you have clarity in what you want and why you want it. And this goes with not just like, I wanna be a full-time photographer, but why? Like I told you my why, like I really wanna be present for my family. I love having the freedom to travel and just create my own schedule. What is your why? So make sure you always have that written down. Maybe you wanna be able to give more. That's also really important to me. I love having you know, money and time to make more impact and, and donate photo shoots to people in my community who couldn't afford them. I do those kind of things because um, I'm able to now because I've built this incredible business. And Part of that is confidence in your pricing. So the one thing I hate, I'm, not, I'm just gonna say, I hate when photographers say like, what should I charge? And, and you go into a Facebook group, and don't lie, we've all been guilty of it, but you go into a Facebook group and you're like, hey, I need some advice with my pricing. I don't know what to charge, or what do you think? Like, stop asking other people what to charge, okay? Please, if you take one thing away from this. <laughs> because, um, you know, I've charged 200 for a photo shoot, a brand photo shoot, and I've charged 3300 for a brand photo shoot day. And it doesn't matter what you charge. You have to have confidence in your pricing. You have to deliver that, that level of value, right? And you have to believe in it. Because if you don't believe in it, your clients won't. You know, when I started two years ago, there's no way I could charge even $1,000 for a photo shoot. I wasn't there yet. I wasn't ready you know, and $200 felt good to me at that time. And I slowly raised my prices from there. Okay. But just stop asking other people what to charge. Please, please, please. <laughs> Especially for what we do as photographers, because, you know, we can't put a price tag. It's not just about the photos, right? Like what we do, we deliver so much more, you know, we're building confidence in these people to 
follow their dreams as business owners to really love and accept themselves, right? And, and photo shoots can be very transformational for someone's um, self-worth, their confidence, how proud they feel. Um, and it's just priceless. Like we cannot put a price tag on that. Um, most of the time you're going to take these photos, these business owners are going to go out and use them and they're going to make tens of thousands of dollars in their business just from these, these photos, just from putting themselves out and feeling more empowered and confident. So, um, yeah, just, oops, <laughs> that's just what I want to say. I, I want to, I want to wrap it up. So I don't want to go too deep into that. Um, but the next thing I see a lot of us doing as photographers, um, that's really, really detrimental is comparing ourselves to other photographers. And with this, I just want you to remember, there's always going to be someone ahead of you who's better than you. Always. There's always another photographer who's better than you. And there is always someone who is behind you, not as good as you and looking up to you saying, wow. Like, I wish I could do what they do. I wish I could take those photos. I wish I had a business like they do. I wish I was following my dreams. So just remember the next time that you're comparing yourself to someone else, try to find inspiration, but just remind yourself like, yeah, there's always someone better than me. Okay. There's always someone that's not as good as me. And um, that's just like a, a reset, a, my, a reset that I use often <laughs> when I find myself comparing my work right? Um, I put you are the secret sauce because this is a secret of personal branding. You're helping other people build their personal brands and really stand out. And same thing with you as the photographer. I want you to work on building your own personal brand, showing photos of yourself. We all know photos, photos of ourselves get the best engagement on Instagram, on social media, because you are the secret sauce. And you know, you could do exactly what I do. I could give you all my templates, all my secrets, my whole client experience, my pricing. But at the end of the day, like I'm not you, you're not me. And the way you're going to be most successful is to show up authentically every day as you. And that is going to attract the right people to you that are going to freaking love you be obsessed with you, become raving fans. So stay in your lane, you know, really celebrate what makes you unique and don't be afraid to, to put yourself out there. The more you do it, the easier it gets, right? We all know. I know that first photo I posted of myself, like saying, hi, I own a business now. I'm a photographer, major imposter syndrome. It was so hard, but now I'm posting photos all the time. I'm talking on live video all the time and it's not so scary just because I've done it over and over and over again okay so remember it's a marathon not a sprint little baby steps um and just take imperfect action progress over perfection we have to have these like mantras to remind ourselves keep going forward keep investing in yourself and like i mentioned in the beginning um with my story what really helped me and i know this is not for everyone <laughs> but what really helped me uh, thrive in business and help my business really grow and take off was ditching my plan B. And for a while that was, you know, maybe going back to school, maybe being uh, a physical therapist, maybe doing this. And then at one point I just had to say, you know what, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to dive all in heart first, focus on my photography business. I'm going to invest in myself. I'm going to do what it takes. Uh, and I'm going to ditch my plan B and same thing when I was trying to balance weddings and branding, but I knew in my heart, like I was just being called and pulled to brand photography. And I finally was like, you know what? I'm going to say, no, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to niche down. I'm going to not take any more weddings. And it was really scary. But when I niched down and I ditched that plan B, I, my business just took off and blew up. Because I was able, I'm someone who needs to focus. And some people like are very successful doing all types of photography. That might be you. For me, I needed to really focus to make progress and really get good at one thing and really focus on just that brand client experience. And that really helped me to um, make a lot of progress really fast. Um, and the last tip today, I just want to remind you is that it's not about you. 
at the end of the day, you know, when we're feeling this imposter syndrome or we're feeling we're letting our perfectionism get in the way, or we have all these stories like I don't have enough time, I can't charge as much where I live, blah, 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 blah. I've heard it all, right? Remind yourself about your why. Remind yourself it's not about you. Remind yourself that like I have this gift that people need, business owners that can't take their own photos. I have a passion and a gift and I can help these people. I can learn to pose. I can learn to help them build confidence on camera and I can go out and I can make real impact in the world. Um, and I have to remind myself when I'm, when I'm getting in my head that it's not about me. It's not just about me, it's about these people I get to serve um, every single day. So that's it, you guys. Thank you so much. So this is just a little review. Hopefully you got a lot of notes on these three areas of client experience, the product, and then in your mindset. And the last thing I just want to say is let's connect. Oh, no, my picture's not working here. Oh, well. <laughs> it's all good. I had a picture here. Um, but let's connect. Here's my Instagram, at Meg Marie Photo. Please come follow me. And if you watch this, send me a DM and just say, hey, Meg. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if you got a takeaway or if you have more questions that we don't get to answer today. And then, you know, take a screenshot of the free download. You're going to go there to download those free templates I promised you. And that's it. I'm so ready for questions. Oh, my goodness. Okay. I'm back. That was awesome, Meg. Thank you so much. Oh my much. gosh, I'm sorry, it was so long. No, yeah. not, <laughs> not at all. I had a feeling I could way over. There's tons of questions in here. So um, we do have a few minutes left to, to do some questions. So go ahead and um, can you see the questions tab? Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead and peruse. I know you're probably not gonna have time oh, to yeah. answer them all, but I know that um, everyone's got your Instagram stuff. So if they wanna reach out, after if their questions aren't answered, um, certainly do that. Yeah, so Lindsay was asking about the number of photos. If I share 500 unedited images in the proof gallery and ask them to cool down to 100, do they feel, if, but if they're busy, doesn't this overwhelm them? Um, I, I've never had anyone get overwhelmed. I, I, let me ask you this, Lindsay, if your photographer said, Hey, I can pick a hundred photos for you, or do you want me to send you a gallery of 500 and you pick your favorite 100? What would you want to do? <laughs> I think it's all about how you position it and you, you position it as this is a really big benefit to you as my client. I actually let you pick the photos. So you get to pick, I don't know, my clients always get really excited when they get the proof gallery and they're like, oh my gosh, these are incredible. I get, I get messages like it's going to be so hard to narrow down. And I do sell extra photos. So this is a way you can upsell and, and have some add-ons is I do have probably about 20% of my clients that will end up purchasing more photos beyond the 100. So I, I, yeah, I really don't get clients that have ever told me they're overwhelmed though. I think it's a huge value add. I would, I like picking my own photos from my shoots. So Lindsay said, you find people are exhausted after six hours. That can be a long time in front of the camera. So it's not for everybody. You don't have to make a six hour shoot to be a successful brand photographer. Start with an hour photo shoot or a 90 minute or a, a half day at three hours. It's not for everybody. Some people get tired, but some people love it. Some business owners who are doing those, they do two a year with me. Um, I call it famous all year. They're on subscription and they do two six hour shoots with me a year and they get a lot of content on those days. There's a lot of benefits because then they get, they just have to do hair and makeup once. They just have to do the planning session once. They just have to take one day off from their, from their business, right? And they get a lot of content. So it's, it's not for everybody, but a lot of people do love it. And you're not on camera for six hours. We're going to usually four different locations. So there's probably about an hour and a half of drive time in that six hours for the whole day. And we also take a lunch break. I try to always, not every time, but most, unless we're running behind, I try to sit down and we take like a 45 minute uh, lunch or dinner break to just, just take a break and relax. 
And, you know, if they're doing 12 outfits, they're changing, you know, 12 times. So they're not like on camera for six hours, but hopefully that helps. So Angela said, how do you deliver final images if they'll be used across the web and social? Uh, do you deliver cropped images for social? I'm not sure the question. I don't crop the images for them. I always do a standard two to two by three crop, four by six or whatever, and I just do all the photos in that that crop. Um, but I love shoe proof because <laughs> shoe proof allows me to upload the high resolution images and then create. You know, in shoe proof, you can create the download presets of um, you know full resolution, and you'll see this in the email templates you download. Um, but you know. Full resolution, I tell the client, is great for printing. And then I make a version that is 1,200 pixels for social sharing, um, long edge and shoe proof. And that's just kind of my um, standard preset download. So I, I, I communicate that and I tell them, I explain, you know, high res is for printing. This size is for web use only. Yeah, so I went over a few of the questions. Somebody was asking about questions on the questionnaire. Um, uh, I do use a pop-up tint, Amelia. I do have a pop-up tint for changing. They're amazing. They're like $40 on Amazon. You can just pop up a little dressing room wherever you're at, like on the sidewalk or on the beach or wherever. It's so convenient, especially during COVID when a lot of places are closed. So highly recommend getting that. Um, if you don't always have access to a restroom for the clients to change. And um, some of the questions, I know I covered some, but like, what didn't I cover? You know, you want to dive into their brand, find out what, what's your brand, what is your brand, um, what is your brand? <laughs> tell me about your brand. There's so many ways you could say it. Uh, tell me your elevator pitch. Tell me your why and just get to know them. And also what's important on that questionnaire, I mentioned this at the end, but you really want to make sure you're asking them, like, do you have a Pinterest inspo board? You wanna encourage them to make that. And I, this is a little different because I know as a, a portrait photographer previously in weddings, it would be kind of annoying when you get like a big Pinterest board of like 200 photos. Uh, and your wedding clients like can you get all these images for me? <laughs> um, but with brand photography, it's super helpful and I communicate in that um, in in my emails about You know make a Pinterest vision board with 15 to 30 of your top favorite images, so I tell them how many to do so they're not like overdoing it um, and also just looking at Instagram accounts of people they like that's gonna really help you get ideas for locations, wardrobe, props, posing, expressions. And that's gonna start the dialogue when you're on that planning session and creating that key shot list. And two tricks uh, Glennis has about helping my clients feel confident on camera, especially more of those who are introverted, definitely play music. So I always encourage my clients to create a, a playlist on bring their playlist um, for of some music, some good feel good music, and I have some too if they don't have one. Um, but playing music, like whether you're in a private home, whether you're like in at a mural wall or on the beach, you can bring a little speaker and that really helps them get into the zone. And then also just, you know, the other thing is don't leave the client hanging. You know, none of us like to be photographed by a photographer who's just quiet on the other side of the lens keep talking keep encouraging them keep giving positive reinforcement like you look great this is amazing oh my gosh hold that oh i'm just gonna adjust my settings but hold that pose i'm just getting the lighting right like i'm just talking 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 so there's not this awkward silence or having a conversation or asking them about their business their family getting to know them you know um and then my last little tip for you is I always love to teach my clients the one person trick to think of one person as they look into the camera lens. Just one person that they want to inspire um, through these photos, or maybe it's a favorite client, or maybe it's like their kid 
or their spouse that just makes them smile and giggle, I, I remind them, think of that person and you'll see their energy shift when you do that. Um, when you tell them to think of someone that makes them happy. Do clients get overwhelmed by the questionnaire? No. You know, Lindsay, I think you're worried about people getting overwhelmed, but here's the thing. If you're gonna invest a lot of money into a brand photo shoot, are you gonna want that photographer to like show up and actually like dig into your brand and get intentional? I know I would. Um, they don't get overwhelmed because one, my questionnaire is not too long. It's about 12 questions. I think you can fill it out in about 20, 30 minutes. Um, and, but I, I get where you're going with this. Some people who haven't thought about their brand, haven't articulated their why. What I found, Lindsay, is that when they go through the questionnaire, even if they didn't finish every question, when we're on that planning session, they say, Meg, oh my gosh, that was so, so helpful. Thank you so much for making me do this. Like I hadn't sat down and taken time to do this questionnaire. And um, it's been really, really helpful. You know, it's, it's not really hard questions. Maybe the hardest one that I have is, why are you so passionate for this work? Why did you get into it? I think you'll be surprised, Lindsay. Most people could talk about what they do all day long. When it comes to starting your business, usually you have like, you have a why. You're really passionate for a reason, right? So I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. People are going to thank you for doing that. And then here's a question that got a lot of likes. What do you charge for a full day shoot? Do you incorporate video? Did you guys listen to my talk about don't, no, I'm just kidding. Don't ask what to charge. No, I charge 3,300 right now. Uh, I work, I've done, you know, almost 200 brand photo shoots to work my way up to feeling confident that I'm delivering enough value to charge that. Um, and that that's what I charge. Um, I don't incorporate video, but I recommend videographers. And sometimes we work together with the client. I just had a client last weekend who for an hour, she had her videographer come into the location and do some video. And that was really fun too. I'm in San Diego. And I also think, you know, I, I think I could go to anywhere in the country and charge this because I'm really confident in my pricing. And it might take a while to like network and find the right community of entrepreneurs who would pay good money for brand photos. But I firmly believe like the, the, the value that I'm delivering and how much it's gonna make in their business, I could charge this anywhere in the world, for sure. And then do you offer payment plans? Yes, I love this question, Micah, because payment plans are everything. Majority of my clients do not pay $3,300 at once, right? Um, and the way I really uh, position myself or position the pricing is I give them the option like of a deposit and then three payments of for the rest. And I space that out. So payment plans are really important, especially um, with my yearly subscription clients. Um, a lot of them paid $500 down to become a subscription client, and then now they pay 10 payments of $350. So it's a $350 a month payment, and then, yeah. But I don't like to get into too many numbers about payments because, you guys, we can charge whatever we want as long as we're delivering that value, right, to the client. There's so many different ways we can price ourselves but you have to start with what feels good to you. You know, you have to start with, and you don't wanna undercharge yourself either. We gotta remember that 50% of what we make, we don't keep as business owners. If you factor in taxes, expenses, softwares, equipment, also personal growth, you know, I invest in coaches and courses and marketing, you know, not traditional marketing, but I invest in things like my client experience, like client gifts. I give my client a gift every photo shoot. Things like that add up, and then I'm left with 50% to actually pay myself. So we have to remember, if we're charging 1,000, we're keeping 500. You gotta price yourself like a business if you want to you know, make it in business, right? So awesome, Hillary's gonna catch the replay. Hey, it looks like we've got time for like one more question. 
Do you yeah. want to pick one out? Last two, I see. Okay. All right, <laughs> we'll do two. <laughs> Last few questions, because I see one that has eight and nine, you know, lights. Okay. Lindsay says, I'd like to know your structure, your pricing, your packages, currently minor structures. So we talked about that a little bit, Lindsay. There's so much you can do. When I first started, I had the three-tier option, kind of like that's very popular with wedding photography. I had a one-hour portrait session. I had a half day, and I had a full day. And that worked great. And then what I realized is for me, my schedule, my goals, I didn't want to be doing eight to 12 photo shoots a month. I just wanted to do one full day a week. And so I got rid of those bottom two because I was busy enough. I was getting referrals um, and booking a few months out, but the demand was growing for my service. And so I was able to cut those out and only offer what I really love, my zone of genius, which is the full day. So there's so many ways, and that's been really successful for me too, only offering one. So so many ways to do it. You kind of have to trial and error, right? And see what, what works for your schedule, your personal goals, how often you want to be actually in the field photographing and, and see what your clients want. And then Megan said, what do you find most effective, the most eff effective way to advertise to your ideal client? Hmm. This is a really easy one. So I've never spent a dollar on traditional marketing for my business. Not one dollar, and that's because of the client experience. Some of the tips I gave you guys to creating an amazing experience for your clients um, that's gonna really wow them, they go and tell all their friends. And that's what's really cool about this industry is like they're business owners, they get it. And if you deliver an amazing service and product, they're gonna wanna tell the world about you and they absolutely well will. And so probably 80%, well, yeah, probably 80% still of my business, of clients that actually book, not leads coming in, but 80% of the clients who actually book are referrals. And that, that's my primary, primary way, is just really pouring my heart and soul and resources into my clients, trying to always make the experience better for them, and then that comes back to me. And then I just want to answer this last question, which is um, who trying to read who said beauty begins the moment you decide to be yourself. That was Coco Chanel. <laughs> Coco Chanel, I love that quote. Like I said, you guys, you know, don't try to be like another photographer. Get inspired by each other. We can all learn and grow from each other. But at the end of the day, you have to do what you know feels true to you, and and you have to, you know, feel empowered to create your own business, your own way. Hopefully that helps. Yay! Yay! Um, that was just super inspiring, and I know that everybody on here is probably thinking the same thing. Um, so thank you for opening up so much and, and sharing all of that. All right. Well, um, thank you guys for coming. Thank you, Meg, so much for um, coming on today and sharing everything with us. And um, we'll see you guys at another webinar, I hope. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much, Karen. Thank you. Have a good rest of your week. Bye. Bye.